Limi, literally meaning the people residing in the river valley, is one such village in the north of the Humla district in the Karnali zone of the far northwestern corner of Nepal. For centuries it has been a part of the Nari region of Tibet, an area enveloped in mystery and renowned as the top of the world. Nari is also the land of the sacred Mount Kailash, the precious mountain of heaven, and Lake Manasarovar, a center for Buddhism and Hindus as well. It was not until 1961, with the Sino-Nepalese Border Treaty, that Limi came under the authority of Nepal. The people of Limi follow the Drukungagyu sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Limi's isolation was the reason why a multitude of ancient, rare, and very precious religious objects could be preserved to the present day. The most precious tankas and statues remain under lock and key, guarded by the most trustworthy members of the community. According to verbal history, some people from the Nari region of Tibet settled in a place called Samso, situated between the tributaries of the great Karnali River. People who came there for trading called them Lairi, meaning people staying in the river valley. Over time, this descriptive term has come to identify this community in Nepal as Limi, a community dependent mostly on agriculture and animal husbandry. Limi is located in the Trans-Himalayan Valley bordering Tibet and consists of three ethnic villages, Til, Waltse, and Zhang. Waltse is the biggest village and the monastic headquarters of Limi and is located in the middle of Limi Valley. The easternmost village in Limi, Zhang, lends itself most to animal husbandry. Limi is connected through Nalu Pass to its district headquarters, which is a three to five day walk depending on weather conditions. During winter, this route is totally closed due to extensive snowfall. Limi is linked to Tibet by two trails, one leading to Parang Trading Center, which is usable all year round, and another leading north to the pasture area east of Holy Mount Kailash. These different routes are ancient trade routes used for trading Tibetan salt, wool, furus or wooden bowls, 
rice, butter, and almost all the basic requirements. Due to its isolation, there is not much government reach available. Nowadays, due to the closeness of a road built by Chinese communists near Nepal's border, most of the basic items are brought directly near Limi village in jeeps and trucks through high and difficult roads. This is a major benefit to the Limi community. Like every city and every village, this is a place blooming with all dimensions of life. They laugh, they love, they sing, they cry, they wonder, they ponder. They, like everybody else, experience every season of life that they are offered. Chang, the welcome party, invites the spring in Limi. It is celebrated for two to three days. For the traders and travelers who went for trading, pilgrimage, or to work in lower places during winter, Zhong Chang is literally the junction of sharing past experiences, celebrating the present, and restructuring the inner spirit for the future. Fields and courtyards are repaired to plant food grains in the next few weeks. Before starting preparations for working on fields for cropping, people celebrate Jui Chang Chemo in full spirit. Days are filled with excitement as people sing and dance. Different games such as horse racing, Bow and arrow competitions and traditional drama are performed to further enrich the environment.
Summer in Limi begins with yorma, the cutting of unnecessary grasses that grow in the fields along with the crops. Summer is also the season when traders go to Purang, Nari, or Tibet for trading. They sell furu, horses, yak saddles, watches, and horse decorating items. They also buy their winter requirements before autumn, like wheat, rice, sugar, butter, Tibetan tea, food grains, and cloth for the long winter, during which access is impossible. Transportation of such things from Porang is done by yak caravans, which take three or four days. <coughs> Traders stay most of the summer in Porang looking for different business possibilities and for a retreat. <laughs> Hard work and celebration has always been the spirit of Limi. It takes the form of Kwa Gir Pola in the summer. After days of hard work in the field, a celebration by women commences with joy and happiness for two days. By September, crops are almost ready to be harvested. Before harvesting, women clean and take out unnecessary grasses that grow along with the crops. This hard work is again followed by another celebration called Sumbe Duichang. Harvesting of naturally grown grasses at areas far from the village is done after about two weeks of the celebration. <laughs> The villagers harvest, collect, and make bunches of grasses, and then transport them to their houses by yak, zoo, and horse caravans. These grasses are collected to feed their animals during the long, harsh winter. After the completion of the harvest, the separation of grain from stem is done. Tonge Dong Chang, an autumn festival, wraps up the season. It is celebrated after the collection of the land tax and the completion of all farm work. Seichu prayers mark the beginning of winter and are done on the 10th day and the 10th month of the Tibetan lunar calendar year. This, they believe, will bring good luck for their future tasks, especially passing the hard winter smoothly. <laughs> Traders, travelers, and rich Limis depart the village at the beginning of winter to other places like Kathmandu, India, and nearby villages in the Humla district for trading, for pilgrimage, and basically to escape the rough winter. Most villagers, however, remain in Limi. Amongst many important festivals in winter, 
Lothar is one of the biggest. It is a celebration of the new year. They sing and dance different traditional songs and perform traditional plays and make special food and unlimited amounts of chong, the local wine. <laughs> Rimcho is another important ceremony of the Limi people that falls in winter. This is a traditional mask dance that offers prayers and pujas to God to eliminate evil things and to bless the villagers. After about a month of Rimcho, monks and nuns get together for the betterment of all sentient beings and the new lives that come at the beginning of spring, including insects, plants, and flowers. Marriages are mostly performed in winter. During winter, there is less work, leaving time for social bonding. These ceremonies last a few days and take place at both the bride and groom's houses. Relatives of the bride wear red clothes, while relatives of the groom wear blue clothes. They sing and they drink all night long. <laughs> Limi, amidst its struggles and celebrations, still remains an unknown region, its potential still waiting to be unleashed. Its exotic biodiversity, its climactic variety, its unique natural beauty, its rare, unique culture, and its natural floras and faunas make Limi an ideal location for tourist attraction. Mount Kailash and Lake Manasarovar, a holy, precious, and rare combination of beauty and religion, has been holding special significance for people since early times. Limi, with her unique eyes, captures the beauty of this place like nowhere else. Besides tourism, different varieties of medicinal plants and expensive herbs make this place one of the potential economic centers. Yeah. 
After all, sustainability of its culture and civilization, nurturing of its beauty, preservation of its rare species, and exploration of its potential is what Limi is waiting for. It needs hands to fulfill its dreams. They need eyes that they can see them. They need seeds of investment to be planted. It is still waiting, waiting for your support.